Fora TV. The world is thinking. How would a psychologist perhaps work with some of these features? Well, a lot of narcissistic people, they love to tell you about themselves. They're quite garrulous. Yeah, they love to explain things to you. Because you're stupid. You're an idiot. Let me tell you how it really is, mate. That's the, that's the attitude. So you get them to talk. You, you play dumb. You sort of appeal to that narcissistic need to impress you. And that, that's what we advise the investigators and the examiners to do. To, to, no, not we, psychologists. Um, to actually get them to, to, to pander to this narcissism. And once people get talking, they tend to say a lot more than they intended to. Have you noticed that yourself at parties? Yeah, we all do, don't we? Uh, we all go home thinking, oh, God, did I, what did I really say? <laughs> well, the same with criminals as well. They have this potential to do that as well. So you set it up. And you might, in an examination or investigation, make sure there's an attractive young female there in the room. It could be the person asking the questions or it could be just sitting in the background looking admiringly at them. And they're playing to an audience. And, of course, that's narcissism in action there. They may not tell you anything worthwhile, but there's a good chance they'll probably tell you more than they intended to. And that little thing that they think was unimportant might be that little piece of the jigsaw that the investigators find absolutely crucial. Psychopathic traits, you know, the psych we've all heard about psychopaths in the workplace. You know, everyone you don't like is a psychopath these days, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get on with my boss. They're a psychopath. <laughs> It's something more than that. I mean, it's a severe psychological problem. It's not an insanity. It's about personality. Look at it all there. They're glib and superficial. They're grandiose, a bit like the narcissistic people, lying, commenting, manipulative. No remorse or guilt, really shallow, no empathy, and failure to accept responsibility. So it, it, it is a bit like narcissism as well. The second part of it is the criminal lifestyle, which perhaps the, the narcissists don't necessarily have to the same extent. They need a lot of stimulation and they get bored very easily. So that's why they do really erratic, dangerous, cruel, anything to give themselves a buzz. They're parasites as well. They don't control themselves very well. Promiscuous sexual behaviour, lack of realistic long-term goals, etc. So yet again, with the people who've got the, anti, the, um, the psychopathic traits, yet again, they make it easy in some regards to, to be exploited at a psychological level. Because they're, they're, their behaviour is all over the place. So eventually, you know, in their criminal enterprises, things are going to start to unravel because they don't have any loyalties. They don't have any sense of control. They don't care. They have no anxiety. They have no guilt. So in some regards, they are out of control and they eventually implode themselves. So a psychologist might help an investigator to identify those traits, which be the ones that they should be watching out for, for this person's sort of ultimate demise psychologically. But because they are cruel and callous and cold and use fear and manipulation, they are also very powerful as well because people will uh, kowtow to them. Right. So what do we do as an investigative psychologist? You advise the investigators how to approach the target. You know, are they narcissistic? Are they this? Are they that? Who else to approach in the network? Because you know you've already built up that sociogram. You know in the hierarchy who has it in for that person. Who has it in for the target? Who's this target's, who's, who has, whose wife has this target slept with? <laughs> That's a good start, isn't it? There's someone who's willing to, to point the finger at them. And you've probably heard this through telephone intercepts and other kinds of approaches. So this is, this is you know, where you can get that information. Which investigators will work best with a target, whether it make a young female, older male, etc. How do we infiltrate the network with undercover operatives? You know, in other words, people posing as criminals themselves. You've already worked out the psychological domains of the target, so you try to sort of match them with the undercover person. Um, how to set up the examination process, how to set up the room, you know, whether to make it more intimidating for somebody, make them scared, or, or make them feel comfortable. Some people operate under fear, some people operate, they're much more likely to tell, th tell you things when they're feeling comfortable. What to disclose to them, what you know and what you don't know. And which buttons to press and which ones to avoid and indicators of deception. So these are all things that psychologists might be able to help the investigator with.